Hello, let's go over the mouse genetics gizmo together. And um, right here, we've got some prior knowledge questions, just kind of getting your thoughts about um, why these kittens are similar or not. There's not really a right or wrong answer because we're going to explore that question. Okay, so. Um, with the warm up, uh, we're going to learn a little bit about heredity, and that's passing genetic information from parent to offspring. Um, you'll be watching a little video about Gregor Mendel later, but he was kind of the one who first discovered some of the ways that our genes are passed on from our parents. And we're just going to be looking at one trait, uh, the color of the mice. Okay, so first it's going to have us take two black mice. So these are uh, considered purebred. Oops, let me clean this up. So I'm going to take uh, two black mice and put them as the parents, and I'm going to breed them. So I'm going to click breed. Let me move myself out of here. I'm just going to just going to get rid of my picture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit breed. Okay, and then uh, we'll look at all the offspring. They look black. And um, this appearance is called phenotype. So we're going to be looking at two new vocabulary terms this week, and one of them is phenotype and one of them is genotype. So phenotype is the physical appearance, what, what we see, and here's some other phenotypes. Um, that we all have, like some of us have a widow's peak, hairline, a straight line, hairline, dimples, uh, the way our earlobes are attached, rolling our tongue. So these are all phenotypes, freckles, no freckles, being colorblind. And then um, the genotype is gonna be our specific alleles, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so that's phenotype. And you're going to answer those questions. Um, I think, oh, and then you're going to do it again. You're going to clear it. And this time you're going to breed the white mice. Okay, so that's probably not too hard to figure out what's going to happen there. Okay, and then we're going to do, uh, look at some patterns. So we're going to go ahead and clear that. So we know that these are purebred mice. So you know, we kind of breed them over and over and they continue to show, actually, here's, here's the white mice, we breed them. And you can breed them again and again. So actually, let me close these, we're not supposed to be there yet. But you can just kind of keep breeding them. And each time you'll notice, it just continues to show only white mice. So that's how we know we have a purebred line. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take a black mouse that's purebred and a white mouse that's purebred, and we're going to breed them. Okay, so let's click breed several times. And what are we noticing? Okay, these are all black. Okay, so no matter how many times we breed them, the offspring continue to look black, even though one of the parents has white fur and is a purebred white for mouse, which is interesting. Okay, so now we're going to take two of the offspring and put them in the holding cages. So these are considered to be hybrids. Okay, hybrid is like a half, half purebred. So it's it's half uh, purebred of black fur and half of another. Sometimes when you breed purebred dogs, you call them hybrid when they're of different breeds. Okay, so now we're going to clear that and we're going to breed the hybrids. This is a little strange, so let's not pretend that this is people, but uh, yes, that's kind of uncomfortable. We're breeding the siblings here, um, but we're just breeding hybrids. We'll just say they're hybrid and let's go ahead and see what happens. So we're going to breed until there's 100 offspring. It says click on the show statistics. Okay, so let's go ahead and breed them once. And they're all black. Let's breed them again. Oh, there's a white one. 
Okay, so we're gonna keep breeding until we get to 100 offspring. Okay, so sometimes there's, sometimes there's more white. Usually there's no white or less white. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way to 100. Keep going, you're gonna say how many are black, how many are white, and then you're gonna answer the questions. Which parent combinations yield only white? which one's only black, which one's a mixture, okay? So this is kind of what Mendel was doing, but he was doing it with peas. Um, and he bred purebred pea plants and he was crossing them and looking at with each generation of pea plants that came after those, uh, what happened. So this is kind of the same experiment. Okay, now we are going to clear it and we're going to put a, a black mouse purebred and a white and um, we're going to start looking at their genes okay so we all know that we have dna in all of our cells and the parents give half their dna to each child genes are segments of dna that control a particular trait so remember genes make proteins and proteins make our trait and most genes have um, several versions or alleles. Okay, so we call those combinations a genotype. So if I click on here, show genotype, and then I click on a mouse, do you see how, so right here where it says click on a mouse, do you see how that turns to little f, little f? Those are the alleles. Those that is the genotype of this mouse. Little f, little f, and then this mouse is a purebred has big f, big f. So the f stands for their fur color. The big f stands for black, and the little f is white. And so this one has two big f's. One it got from its mom, and one it got from its dad. And this one has little f, little f. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and breed these and, and we remember, so here, the genotype of the black parent is gonna be big F, big F, and the genotype of the, little, the white one is little F, little F. So just to kind of bring that into, make that make sense of it. Um, it's a little smaller. Okay, why can't I see this? Okay, so, we have two chromosomes of every, we have two uh, chromosomes for every set of chromosomes. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go back here. Um, all right. So for every pair, we have one from mom, one from dad. Okay. And mom gave us, uh, you know, a gene for eye color. Dad gave us a gene for eye color, but they're not always the same gene. Mom might, as, might have given us one color and dad might have given us another. So we call we call that version of the gene, we call it an allele. So one parent could have given us a brown eye allele and one parent could have given us a blue eye allele. Okay, so here we go. This is allele for brown, allele for blue. And so we give them the same letter, but one of them is sometimes dominant. So we make that a big B and one of them is sometimes recessive. A little b. And dominant and recessive means that, okay, so here um, the letters that we use to represent those are our genotypes. So we could be big b, big b, big b, little b, or big little b, little b. And then phenotype is what our physical trait is. Um, so our alleles can be dominant or recessive. Dominant means that they're going to show up even if you have just one copy. So look at this. Look at this cat, it has big B, big B, and it's brown. Is it a cat? And this one has big B, little B, but it's still brown, even though it has a gray allele. This one has little B, little B, and it's gray. So this is an example where brown is dominant. Anytime you have a brown allele, even if there's a gray allele there, the brown is gonna show up and the the gray allele is called recessive and it, it hides 
if there's a dominant allele, but it only shows up if you have two of those recessive alleles. So you can kind of start thinking about, ah, this that's what might be happening on this mouse situation where the white um, alleles might be recessive. So let's, and we already know that because um, if I move my mouse over this white one on right, right here, you can see that they're little f, little f. So we already know that white is going to be recessive. And here it's big F, big F. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click breed. Okay. And again, we already know when you take a pure bred black and a pure bred white that all the offspring are going to be black. But look at their genotypes. They're all big F, little f. Okay. They're all hybrids and they're all, so having one of each, having one, one uh, capital and one lowercase or one dominant, one recessive, that is called heterozygous. If they have the same allele, that is called homozygous. Homo means the same and hetero means different. So we use that, we use that in homosexual, heterosexual. Homosexual is same sex and hetero is different. Okay, and then um, it's talking about how dominant alleles are always expressed and recessive alleles are not expressed, not expressed when the dominant allele is present. So when we look here, their black fur, uh, they have black fur even though they're, they have a uh, a little f, a little allele, but that tells you that the, the black fur allele is dominant. Okay, so now we're going to put these guys in the holding cages, and then we're going to clear it, and then do this disturbing cross right here. Okay, and then we are going to um, answer these questions. So th these are each heterozygous. They're each big F, little f. Okay, so remember each parent only gives one of their alleles for fur color. So um, parent one can give a big F or a little f. It's only going to give one, one or the other. And this parent is also only going to give a big F or a little f. And so now we're going to see what the possible genotypes are going to be for the offspring. So for example, if this one gives a big F and this one gives a big F, then, then one possibility might be big F, big F. Okay, so let me do this with you. So if parent one has is is big F little f, this one is big F little f, then that means that this parent can give an, a big F or a little f. This parent can give a big F or a little f. Oops, this one should be a little f. Okay, so that means that the offspring, if both of them give a big F, it could be big F, big F. If both of them give a little f, then they could have an offspring that's little f, little f. If this parent gives a big F and this parent gives a little f, then another combination would be a big F, little f, and vice versa. This one could give a little f and this one could give a big F, but that's the same thing. We always put the big the, the dominant one first, so that would be the same thing. So those are the possible combinations, okay? Then you're gonna go ahead and click breed and you're gonna see if all of these offspring match these predictions. Okay, so let's go ahead and click clear, okay? And then now we're gonna do something called a Punnett square. So the way Punnett squares work, um, Let's see if I have a Punnett square example. Um, I do. OK. 
Okay, so the way Punnett squares work, well, I'll use this one, I guess. Um, you put one parent's genotype um, above the square. So this was the purebred mouse. Okay, so we put him, if we put him here, um, his genotype was big F, big F. So we put one allele here and one allele here because remember he could give he could give um, this one or this one. I, I don't know why I'm calling him he. And then the other um, parent, okay, the other parent is going to go here, um, here. Sorry, my daughter's drum lesson is starting. Okay, and then what you do is you put all the possible combinations in the square. So if if this, if these two combine, then you're going to put them in this box. So big F and little f is one possibility with these two parents. Another possibility is to put this big F and this little f. Here's another possibility, big F, little f. And here's another possibility, big F, little f. Okay, I'm going to do that with you. Big F. And then this one comes across, little, little f, big f, little f, big f, little f. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and answer what are the genotypes of the offspring. So these are all the possible genotypes of the offspring, and they're all the same. This first generation is going to be all the same. If we breed them, Look at all of these are the same. If I click on any mouse, the genotype is always going to be up here. It's going to say big F, little f. Okay. And um, what percentage are going to have black fur? Well, they're all black. So that's going to be 100%. And what percent is going to have white fur? None. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click breed several times to see if anything changes. Nope. They're always staying big F, little f, and they're always staying black. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, predict, uh, use Punnett squares to predict what's going to happen when we breed the hybrid parents. Okay, so this is a hybrid parent. I wonder if we have to keep him. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get a hybrid parent. So here's a hybrid Okay, clear that. And let's go ahead and predict because sometimes you don't have a million mo uh, mice to, per to breed. And even for people, you if you know that there's a certain trait that say carries a disease, you don't want to go ahead and have like 100 kids to figure out what your probability is. So geneticists have now figured out we can do Punnett squares to predict what are the chances that you will have a child with that particular um, gene and also that particular trait. So for parent one, we're going to do, we're going to put one parent up here. So we're going to put a big F and a little f. Oops. Okay. And then parent two, we're going to go ahead and put big F. And we're going to put little f. Okay. And then we're going to combine, each parent can only give one allele. So if this parent gives a big F and this parent gives a big F, then this mouse is going to be big F, big F. And remember, big F stands for black fur and little f stands for white fur. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and do this one. Big F, little f. Big F, little f. And then this one, if each of them give a little f, then they'll have a white furred baby. So how many, what percent is going to be black? Well, in our Punnett square, we've got four squares and they're supposed to total 100%. So each square is worth 25%. So this plus this plus this, think of quarters and a dollar. So this is 25%, 50%, 75%. So all of these are going to still be black fur. Because remember, even the F, big F, little f, is going to be black fur. So 75% are going to be black fur. And then this one is the only one that's going to be white fur. Okay, So 25%.
Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and um, predict what's going to happen with a heterozygous black, big F, little f, and then a homozygous white. So you're going to put the white parent here and the black parent here, and you're going to go ahead and predict what their offspring are going to look like. Now we're going to go ahead and use this to calculate uh, with 500 offspring. Okay, so you already know how to do big F, little f breeding with big F, little f, because that's these guys right here. You're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and you're going to just breed until right here you get to 500, and then you're going to go ahead and figure out what the percentage is. Then you're going to take, let's breed until we get one. So this one is a, is a, little f, little f, because we know later we have to breed a little f, little f. So let's go ahead and put him aside. And we also need a big f, little f. Big f, little f. Okay, so we're going to hold them for later. And we're just going to breed all the way till you get up to 500. And you're going to put what percent of black and what percent of white. And then you're going to go ahead and breed these two mice and see how closely they match your predictions from the Punnett square, okay? So our Punnett square predict, predicted it would be 75, 25. So far it's 78, 22. So it's not, um, not far off at all. And we're gonna, the more um, mice we breed, the closer to this percentage it should get. Okay, so then you can draw your conclusions and you're done, great. Have fun. Email me if you have any questions.